next. Hear all of our previously aired broadcasts of News for the Soul online at newsforthesoul.com. Now let's get back to the show. Next on News for the Soul, learn intuitive skills with Tina. Tina Zion is a fourth generation intuitive medium, an internationally known expert in medical intuition and mediumship. As an award-winning author and instructor, she teaches medical intuition and mediumship skills to students around the world. And now she's here to teach you on News for the Soul. Please welcome Tina Zion back to News for the Soul. Hello there, everyone. And yes, this is Tina Zion, and I am doing this show Learn Intuitive Skills, and I want to start every single show with telling you that I do not have any special gifts, and none of us do. Even uh, we professional intuitives, medical intuitives, and mediums, we don't have a special skill, and that's what I love to talk to people about is how we humans all have these skills, and that's really what it is, and I where I just help people notice the very, very uh, subtle in their life because many times our intuitive pieces of information are very, very subtle. So I want to start out with that, that I don't have any skills and everyone has this ability. So let me start out by what, with what we've covered so far in the blog talk radio that I've been doing. I've talked about what intuition is and oh, like the 15 key insights. I have uh, taught people to notice that there are 18, probably more, 18 pathways that the universe actually communicates with us. And so I, I love doing that one too because so many people are not aware that the universe is a living being, a living presence, and it's communicating with us all the time. Let's see, I've also done an interview with Marianne Kelly, and she's one of my longest-term mentoring students, and she came from a very, very, very high-level corporate position in the business world and has left that to do this level of intuitive work and healing work. So we, I did an interview with her. What else have we done here? That I've talked to people about, oh, the, being a medium, having that soul level of awareness, noticing especially how our thoughts and emotions are making us ill or making us really, really well. And certain emotions tend to congregate or collect in certain parts of our body, which will lead to a blockage, which will lead to illness. And today, I want to bring up and talk about energetic cords and what to do about them. Are they really real? Things like that. So here we go about energetic cords, and I'm running all around the the world (laughs) talking to people, especially about energetic cords that we all have as living human beings. So energetic threads or cords are very real. Many people have already heard of the silver silver cord, and that keeps our, our soul and our body linked together and coming together in our physical form here on earth. That silver cord provides vitality, stability, and stability in connection with the physical body and our emotional body. You might have occasionally perceived some silver cords already. And some silver cords are very shiny and glistening, And some are kind of dull or dim or or even frayed. I've noticed them frayed, twisted, even knotted. So that's really one type of cord, but there's all types 
of other chords as well. These chords and the other chords are not connected, connecting us with our soul or our higher self. Courting happens also between relationships. So our relationship with other people, other people's relationship with us. And as I talk about this, I really want you to notice yourself in all kinds of ways, okay, about this. So the medical intuitive, but also yourself, can perceive information regarding these energetic cords. For example, I've noticed that cords are often different lengths, they're different thicknesses, some are thick and powerful, while others are more thread-like and almost like a pulled thread of fiber. Some cords have been created with different intensities, different pulsations. Cords are also created under different circumstances. Sometimes unconsciously, but sometimes very thoughtfully calculated for certain purposes. So sometimes they're done, you know, and connected with another person or somebody else with you very, very unconsciously. But sometimes it comes about uh, with a lot of purpose and has created on, you know, chords to you or you to them very purposefully. But all chords have a dominant flow of energy moving either toward you or away from you. So think about that, either moving toward you or away from you. So what I'm saying is an energetic cord has a flow, has a movement of energy going through it. Again, either to you from someone else or from you to someone else. So energetic cords are created when a great amount of positive or negative emotion is involved. So now really think about that. Cords are really created usually with a great amount of emotion, and that emotion can be super-duper positive or it can be very negative or either just somewhat negative. We become linked with our loved ones with sturdy, unshakable cords. The energy bond is created with love, enjoyment, a sense of appreciation. Now, these are the very positive cords I'm talking about, that we, are, we actually are energetic linked, energetically linked with our loved ones, with sturdy cords, very energetically loving, with enjoyment and a sense of pr- appreciation. Loved ones can be our biological family, our friends who have become like family, our life partner, or some other variation of a really positive connection. A core between people that is based on, on that cherishing each other will, will look different than other cords. So a very positive cord between you and other people that you cherish, you care about, you love, will be very, very shimmery. It'll be, have a sense of feeling, what what do I want to say, weightless. And it'll be very flexible. And so it'll be shimmery and light in color. It will be thinner, more like a, a beautiful, beautiful, thread, a golden thread, or a beautiful thread of other colors. And these attachments tend to connect a lot of times from heart to heart. So I want you to start to notice yourself as I describe all these and just see what you notice about yourself because whatever you notice, you are going to think it's you're simply making it up. You're going to think that you're just imagining this. But I'll say over and over again and every uh, single time we talk that you will always notice that intuition will feel like imagination. It will never stop feeling that way. So anyway, back to, back to the chords. The, the very, very you know, happy, pleasant, loving chord will be more like a thread. It will be shimmery of some beautiful color. 
very weightless, it seems, and very flexible. And these attachments tend to connect very often from heart to heart. You know, our heart is very much its own living organism, its own organ with even brain cells. And I think I've brought that up in other shows too, that our heart has brain cells. So our heart has a thinking part of it, a feeling part of it. So you will perceive this positive cord as balanced and it'll feel fluid with very positive sensations for the people involved. And it's not just attached to our heart. It can be attached to other places within our body. Now, negative cords, let me talk about them. Negative cords, on the other hand, are usually created from dramatic emotions. Here again is emotion. See, the, the positive cords are created from very positive emotions. Negative cords, though, on the other hand, are usually created from dramatic emotions such as betrayal, anger, let's see, rage, shame, guilt, or some kind of trauma can cause it, or even a misunderstanding between people. My goodness, people are misunderstanding each other constantly, it seems. So negative courting between people may be deliberately or very, very, very unconsciously generated. Some cords control another person, while other cords are created from a sincere what sense of neediness. So some cords are there for controlling another person. Some negative cords are there for oh, a severe sense of neediness. Now think about the people that you know in your life. When I mention these very positive situations, and now I've been talking about these very negative situations. Some cords even control another person, while other cords are created from that severe sense of neediness. And I really want you to think about if you feel controlled, if you have a a sense of needy people around you, who have possibly courted into you. So courts are created with a great amount of either positive or negative emotion. You'll tend to perceive courts based on those very strong emotions, such as guilt or the betrayal or even shame that link people first and second and third chakras. So here I want to start talking about locations that you might notice a cord, and I really want you to to hear this as part of your own healing process, to notice if you have a sense of needy people, you know, pulling on you, and if you feel that pull, really notice where that pull feels like in your own body. So let's just take a moment and just notice that if you would. So you'll tend to perceive cords based on that tremendous emotion of guilt, betrayal, shame, linking people. Those those type of emotions tend to be corded in to the first, second, or third chakra. So the first chakra, for those of you who aren't quite familiar with that, is there are power centers, but the first one is now, they're at the base of our spine or in our groin area. The second chakra is beneath your belly button. And the third chakra or energy center is right above your belly button. So those energy centers vibrate more on uh, an emotional plane. So a person interested in controlling someone will tend to connect, now here's some other examples that I'm thinking about. They'll tend to connect into someone's head if one wishes to control another person or to get in control of that person's thoughts, to get them to change in some way, either change in a positive way, change in a negative way, or if someone wants another person to change in their way. 
so that it is very, very common that you will find a cord in someone's head because they're trying to access thoughts. A needy person is unable to generate their own power. That's why they tend to feel so needy and they tend to feel like other people are are more secure and more powerful than they are. Needy people feel an overwhelming sense of deprivation of being on their own. This person who's very, very needy will often cord into a strong person's back or shoulders. It's because our back, the upper back and shoulders has a lot to do with literally shouldering responsibility. So a person who's very, very needy, that is a very common place. It's not the only place, but it's a common place to send out an energetic cord to connect with that powerful person. So a person with unresolved issues about an event will cord into another who's involved with that event. Now, an event can be, oh, a painful moment in time. It can be a very, very positive moment in time. It can be literally a situation where lots of people are involved or the event could be just between you and someone else. So let's see. As someone with a broken heart may attach to another person at their heart center. So literally, that broken heart, they may, out of, out of being so hurt, and using our phrase, having a broken heart, sometimes that very pained person will just, you know, inadvertently, not on purpose, but they will attach to the other person's heart center. Now, victims of any type of negative cord energy will constantly feel extremely exhausted. And there are physicians, and I'll hear this a lot, the medical field cannot find any reason for this level of lethargy. They just can't find any reason because they usually, although I work with a lot of doctors and people from every, every part of the medical field now, But many, many people in the medical field, you know, are not aware of these. They just aren't aware of those. So they cannot find any reason for a level of lethargy. So they may describe feeling as if they're carrying a huge burden on their back. Now, this is the patient, not the the physician or not the medical people. So a lethargy, they'll feel like they're carrying a huge burden. They'll feel like their back is weak or their shoulders. Let's say people who cannot realize their own personal power will find an individual whose qualities they think they they themselves are missing. That cord will connect into the solar plexus of their victim and because they're attempting to capture the qualities that they're missing, but it's the qualities that they find in other people. So they're trying to get those qualities themselves because they don't realize their own power. They just don't realize that. So any of these cords can be perceived. Now, any cords can be perceived, and this is negative cords, can be perceived as, Oh, thicker cords. They will feel or you can see them as dense and sometimes even dark. Sometimes they'll be kind of like ropes. They'll look like an intertwined a cord will usually feel or look like the energy is specifically moving in one direction. So the direction of that flow, that energy flow will be determined by the person who holds the strongest negativity or the person who holds the most uh, sense that there's unfinished business with another person. So, again, notice the direction of the flow of the cord. In other words, if it feels like uh, the cord, if you have a cord with you and it is feels like it's draining you, well, that is because that 
other person is pulling on you. So you'll notice a flow of energy coming out of you outward towards something. You are empowered when you will be empowered when you actually remove this cord yourself or to have someone else help you with it. But I really want to help people to be able to do this themselves. In fact, my latest book is Be Your Own Medical Intuitive, and I really go into detail about this. But I, here's the main thing I want to bring up to everybody listening. I am running all over the world trying to get people to stop cutting cords because energy healers tend to cut these negative cords between the the two people involved. So allow this image to form in your mind right now. If you're holding tight to one end of a garden hose and someone else is holding really tight to the other end of the garden hose, and picture that someone comes along, a, a healer comes along and cuts the cord that we're holding in between us. Okay, so this is a negative cord and one of us is holding tight to one end and someone else is holding really tight to the other garden hose. And then a healer, because they don't uh, often know of any other ways to heal a cord, a negative cord, comes by and cuts it. So I hear this because I I travel internationally, especially before COVID, all over the world, and people all over the world who are energy healers and are doing their best, they are going around cutting cords. And when someone cuts that cord, now think about this. You have one end of the cord or the hose in your hand, and let's see, let's say I'm the other person and I have the other end of the cord in, in me or in my hands. So this picture symbolizes the fact that some of these negative energy still really resides in our energy fields if we just go around cutting cords or if someone cuts a negative cord between you and someone else Cutting that cord is really not a healing of the cord. You will still have one end of the cord and the other person will still have the other end of the cord. So my goal as a medical intuitive and teacher is to help people to stop cutting cords. So I want to assist everybody to completely release the entire cord and Many times these energetic connections, especially the negative ones, have roots or tendrils that, that actually go inside of us. All energy of the cord must be removed first to cleanse that, that remnant of negative energy. So does that make sense? I hope it does to everybody. If, if you're holding one end of a garden hose, Someone else is holding the other end of the garden hose and a healer comes by and cuts it in half. That is not a healing. That's simply just a disconnecting it. And I'm telling you, it will reconnect again probably. So then the thing that I want to do is to help people have that image in their mind and that we've got more abilities to heal those cords than just cutting them. Because cutting them is not a healing. It's just whacking them in two, basically. So here's what I'm going to ask everybody who's, who's with me right now and when you hear this recording. And it'll feel absolutely like you are just dreaming it up. You're just imagining it. But that is really what intuition will always, always feel like. It will always feel like you are just dreaming things up. So try to get over that. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do right now. Is first of all, do not work at this. 
I'm going to ask you just to send your, send your thoughts, send your awareness all around down inside of your physical body right now. And it'll just feel like, like you're sending your thoughts inside of you. But it will also feel like you're sending your vision inside of you. And just from head to toe, from toe to head, from head to fingertips and fingertips back to your head, I just want you to scan all around inside of you with fascination because I feel like some of you might have just maybe jumped into a little bit of fear or worry, but you're doing this with fascination because you're about to be able to do something about this. You're going to go through a healing for yourself. So again, just look around. And it'll just feel like your eyes are just roaming around inside of your physical body. And look all around in your upper chest. Look all around your heart. Look all around in your stomach, your abdomen. Go down one leg at a time, down to your toes, and another, your other leg down to your toes. I give you just a moment to do that. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're just dreaming it up, but I want you to look for something that might look like positive cords, very shimmery and lovely and feels good. But then I want you to also notice if there's any negative cords looking more dense, maybe not um, bright, a bit dull or dark. And just notice the location. Mm-hmm. And then if you would, our energy, who we really are, our soul energy, is not stuck down underneath our skin. So I want you now to look around and scan yourself outside of your skin. So just go out a few inches and don't forget you have a backside. So look up and down all around your backside, a few inches out from your skin. And some of you can just zoom around and do it. Some of you will be a little bit slower and more methodical about it. And notice that your soul energy that most people call an aura just shines out in all directions around you. So again, look all around your sides up and down the front of you, beneath you, above you, behind you, all around. And just notice the very positive cords and notice the location especially of the cords that do not look so positive and do not feel positive. Now be quiet for a moment. Okay, and again, it will feel like you are just making it up. It will feel like you are just imagining it because we're working on a non-physical level here, so it will always feel that way, always. Now, if you have noticed a chord that you're pretty sure isn't very positive, I want you to first notice the location of that cord. In other words, where did you notice it? Mm 
Move it behind you, in front of you. Look all around. So notice the location. And if you would, I want you to notice if it feels as if you created the cord yourself because, you know, we are humans and so that is a possibility that we created a negative cord outward to somebody else. Or notice if it feels like the flow has come to you or into you from another person. So notice the flow outward or inward. Okay, now the next step. I want everyone to realize that we really, really do have spirit guides and we have guides that are actually divine and sacred and we actually have divine and sacred guides who specialize in our healing. So here's what I'd like for you to do. I want you to call out, just in your mind or out loud if you can, I want you to call out for a divine and sacred guide who specializes in removing negative cords out of you now. So I'll repeat that. You call out to a divine, and and you call out asking for a divine and sacred guide who specializes in removing negative cords out of me now, out of yourself now. So just see who arrives for you. And very, very clearly, I want you to tell this guide, this healer, and say these words, either out loud or in your mind, exactly the same power, completely and permanently remove this negative cord out of me now. And I want you to imagine that you push it out of you as your divine and sacred healer removes it. So you work together. And if you would tell the guide to remove now all roots, all tendrils, all negativity from you now. And keep directing your healer guide until you feel a complete removal. Just repeat it until it is completely removed. Somehow you'll just know that. And when it feels right to you, direct your healing guide to send this negative cord back to the sender. It's their energy, so you're not doing any harm. It's their energy in the first place. So have that removed, roots and tendrils and negativity now, and give it back to the sender right now. Mm -hmm. And all this is energy, so it's very, very instant. Notice that it doesn't take any effort. It's instant. And then if you would, there's like a rule of thumb in the universe 
that when anything is removed, it would leave a, an opening or it would leave a hole or leave a space that has nothing in it. So you, all this negativity was just removed. So I want you to now direct your divine and sacred healer in a different way. So listen to this and then repeat it. Completely and permanently fill every space and place within me, and you can name yourself, to fill yourself with cellular health. vitality, joy, and happiness. And how about safety also? And what's very, very important is we must allow ourselves to receive this positive energy and also participate in sending it into your own body. So I ask that you notice now and allow yourself to receive this positive energy and fill up those spaces where the negativity used to be with at least cellular health, vitality, joy, happiness, and go ahead and do that and I'll be quiet again. And then I have just one more very precious, precious step to do in My guides just gave this to me very, very recently. So if you would, I want you to first just place, I'm going to do it with you, by the way, just place your your own hands over your heart. Mm Mm-hmm. And just repeat this after me, so I'll go a a little bit slow, so you can repeat it after you. But I want you to really send it and feel the energy going deep inside of the organ of your own heart, your own energy center. So have your hands over your heart, repeat this and really feel it and mean it when you say it. I give love back into my own heart now. Equal to all the love and care I have given to others. So let me repeat that again for you and just say it again. We can't say this too much. I give love back into my heart now. Equal to all the love and care I have given to others. And really let yourself, really allow yourself to feel that energy of love going deep within the organ of your own heart. It's your own energy center. And you're filling it up equal to all the love and care you have given to others. All right. So I hope this really helps everybody. I hope this really made 
sense to you. And I hope you felt this ooh, lots of ooey gooey love for yourself. Love for yourself. So I've got a couple more ways. And if you listen to this recording, you'll be able to write these these down because this will make a huge difference for you. So I'm going to back up here a little bit. And I'm going to repeat some of this so you'll know just what we just did. And then please listen to the recording so you can write it down. When we write down these requests or directives to our divine and sacred guides, it really empowers it. Something about us writing it in with pen and paper in the old-fashioned way actually empowers it. So I'll, I'll repeat this here in a couple of different directives now. <clears throat> Completely and permanently extract all negative cords sent to me from needy people. Give all the cords back to the senders to help them realize they have their own power now. And then completely and permanently fill all places where the cords used to be with cellular vitality, glowing health, and amazing energy now. And I have a, another healing step that I want to share with you. And this is what you say to your divine and sacred guides. Create for me now the most powerful cleansing filter all around me. So see that filter in your mind's eye or, your, or with your eyes open. And I'll repeat it. Create for me now the most powerful cleansing filter all around me. Really let yourself feel it. Let yourself see it. It will be more powerful if your guides create it for you than if you try to create it yourself. So let them create a powerful cleansing filter all around you. And here's what you do next. You pull all of your own personal energy through the filter. You bring you back through the filter to clean off all the negativity of others. Pull all of your own personal energy through that filter to clean off the negativity of others. Place your very, very cleansed personal energy back into your own body until you feel clean and you feel full. So go ahead and do that now as well. All right. I am doing my best to help people when they do this level of work uh, for others, especially if you're doing this level of work for others, I'm doing my best to come up uh, with these healing methods for ourselves. Because we, we humans get really busy trying to help everybody else. And so my hope is that you help yourself to stay strong, to stay healthy, to stay vibrant. Because what that really means, if you take care of yourself first, is that you will have so much more to give to everybody else. You will have so much more vitality, so much more life inside of you. So I hope that was helpful. I'd love to hear from everybody. If you want to send me an email, it's T 
Tina at TinaZion.com, so it's kind of easy to remember. And my website is TinaZion.com. That's my website. And so I do have, let's see, I do have two more courses coming up that I'm doing. August 12th to the 16th, I am at Omega Institute again in New York State. And my course is to become a medical intuitive practitioner. So the focus of that is to actually be a practitioner for other people. And that is at Omega Institute. I love that. I feel like I'm home when I'm there. And it's August 12th to the 16th. Makes me jiggle saying it. But then I finished that course on 16th, which is a Friday. I think I finished at noon. And then later that evening, I'm also part of uh, an Omega Institute conference. And that goes from the 16th of the evening, uh, Friday the 16th of August, and it finishes at noon on Sunday the 18th. And that conference is titled Trauma and the Soul. And so it's going to be just healing techniques after another. And there's uh, six, seven, or eight of us that are presenting. So we will each have our own uh, methods, our own ways, and the focus is uh, the trauma of our soul. And so I have that going on. And then October 12th and 13th, which is Saturday and Sunday, I am doing a Zoom course about being your own medical intuitive, the real steps to heal yourself. And some of these steps will be included in that, but I've got a whole lot more to share. And that's October 12th and 13th. And that's a Zoom course, so it doesn't matter where you're located at. It will be, I think, in the United States Central Time Zone, I'm pretty sure. And it's to be your own medical intuitive, the real steps to heal yourself. So bless your heart. I love doing this. I love sharing it. And please, please, please come back for more. Oh, I will tell you that next, my next show is the first Monday of each month. And in August, I'm going to interview Mary Beth Decker. Now, she is a also a mentoring student who's worked with me for many years now. And she has taken mental, this medical intuition into working with animals. So she's become a very, very well-known animal healer, animal communicator. And I just asked her if I could do a talk with her and do an interview with her in August. So please join both of us for that, especially you animal lovers There's so much that we can do, and medical intuition is for them just as well. So I'll let you go on that point, and please come back in August, and please listen to this recording over and over again. Bless your heart, and off we go. Hear all of our previously aired broadcasts of News for the Soul online at newsforthesoul.com. Now let's get back to the show. I only had a couple drinks. I'm okay to drive. It's dark out and late, so there aren't that many people on the roads. I'll take the back streets. Less traffic. No problem. If I go slow, I can't go wrong. Right? When it comes to dangerous driving, we can be our own worst enemy. Help police keep our roads safe by being a responsible driver. Because safer roads start with you. A message from the B.C. Police Chiefs.